Alright, this is the same problem that we just did, um, but we're going to do it a new way, but we're going to first start out by doing the same factoring, difference of two squares, and then I'll use a, a new technique for the rest of it. So I'll move through that part kind of quickly. So this can be factored into cosine squared minus sine squared times cosine squared plus sine squared all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1 and then recall that this was the equivalent of 1 so now this looks like cosine squared x minus sine squared x all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1 okay so now we're going to do a, a new technique so the same rationale holds here just like it did in the last example is I got cosine squared in the numerator uh, one of them, and I got two of them in the bottom, and I want to get rid of sine squared, okay? Because I want to end up with my numerator being exactly the same as my denominator, so that can become one. So I got to get rid of the sine squared. Well, I remember that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, so I'm going to add and subtract something. Watch this. So I got cosine x minus as, I'm sorry, cosine squared x minus sine squared x, right? So now I'm going to add a cosine squared x and subtract a cosine squared x. And before I go any further, you will agree with me that adding and subtracting the same thing is an equivalent form of zero. I have not changed anything. I've added it and subtracted it, so nothing is different but this has a cool result. So this is over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Alright, so I can rearrange the numerator. So let's do that a minute. Rearrange the numerator. So I've got a cosine squared x and plus a cosine squared x minus sine squared x oops, minus a cosine squared x. Alright, all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Alright, so I have to start a new page here because I'm running out of room. So I'm just going to recopy what I had before for cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then we had a plus. Um, what was it? Oh, I had already rearranged them. Alright, so let's do that. Cosines there together. Okay, so the cosine squared plus the cosine squared. Then we had the minus sine squared minus cosine squared. There we go. All over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Alright, minus, minus. So you can think of this like a minus 1 and a minus 1. So I'm going to factor out that minus 1. So I've got cosine squared x plus cosine squared x. Um, actually, let's go ahead and add those two together. I can do that um, all together here. So let's do that in this step. So I've got so the cosine x and another cosine x. That gives me two of them. So cosine x squared. Now I'm going to factor out this minus 1, and I'm left with sine squared x plus cosine squared x, and that should ring a bell, all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And again, this comes up a lot. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So now I have 2 cosine squared x minus 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, all over 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And of course, we have equals after all of these, and that equals 1. So, there we go. That's an alternate technique to this proof, and it uses the adding the equivalent form of 0.